Are you a technician working on an HSI or just looking to gain more knowledge? Either way, you've came to the right place. Welcome to Wiles HVAC and Stuff. Welcome back to Wiles HVAC and Stuff. Today I wanted to talk about igniters, or more specifically, HSIs, or Hot Surface Ignition Systems. Uh, your HSI is uh, what most furnaces out there use and have for quite a few years now. Uh, HSIs do have to be replaced once in a while. They, they do fail. And here in just a little bit I'll show you how to check them. Uh, that igniter itself, uh, most of them are made of either silicon nitride or silicon carbide. Um, what it is is that that piece in there has voltage ran to it. Most systems are 120 volts. There are some 80 volt systems out there uh, and a couple of different ones, but most of them your average is 120 volts gets sent to it, uh, causes that igniter to get warm there. Uh, it has a porcelain base to it, that way it's an insulator so it can't ground itself out or anything like that. Uh, but today I wanted to go over what happens uh, if one fails or how you check it out and how you replace one. Uh, so let's see what we can do. Okay, now that we're inside the furnace itself, uh, this is a Goodman 96% uh, efficient furnace. Uh, most layout are, is pretty, pretty standard for most of the different furnaces out there. Um, there are some different placements and things, um, but for the most part they're laid out about the same. Your HSI, uh, just like what we showed just a minute ago, is sitting here in front of your first burner. Uh, it lines up directly in front of there, so whenever this gas valve opens and allows gas to come through, it goes straight across that igniter and, and lights. Uh, the average HSI, uh, depending on voltage and style, uh, we're usually running uh, over 1,000 degrees, 1,100 to uh, uh, 1,500, I believe, uh, degrees across there, and as gas is blown across it, it's able to ignite the flame. Uh, and then your flame sensor has to read it, which we have another video out there as far as flame sensors. Uh, most igniters uh, do have a, a life expectancy, uh, five, ten years, somewhere in there. You do have some cases where you know you can get 20, 25 years out of an HSI. Um, those are a little more far and few in between. Most furnaces will have an igniter replaced in them at least once in their lifetime. So um, now that we've talked about how it's supposed to work, let's see it actually work. Uh, what we're going to need today is just a basic nut driver. This one happens to be a quarter inch nut driver on this or quarter inch screw back there. Uh, we'll need to get it out uh, and then we'll use our, I have a standard um, amp probe here uh, to check our voltages and things. Uh, I use a field piece. You can use whatever you like, um, but uh, we'll see. We'll get it started up and see what it's supposed to look like. Okay, so our furnace is getting ready to light here. The inducer comes on and has a pre-purge before the igniter starts. What we're going to do is put our meter on, on voltage, slide in the plug there, turn the light on so you can see it. And you can see as that HSI lights up, we're putting a, about 121, 122 uh, volts to that HSI. It lights up here in just a second, gas valve's going to open, there we go, and the furnace lights. So this HSI obviously is good, um, but if we do have a failed HSI, I'll show you how to take this out and replace and we'll do it again. So that H, getting that HSI out of there, uh, if you do have to replace one, obviously we want to shut the power down first. Um, HVA, Wiles HVAC and stuff always recommends a certified technician to do any kind of this, this kind of work. Um, but if we are doing it, make sure the power is turned off. Unplug the Molex plug there. I said before, this one has a quarter inch screw, so a short nut driver works very well. Take that screw out of there, and the HSI slides out. Uh, if you are dealing with, like this one here, it's actually a good one. If you are dealing with a good one, you don't want to touch your fingers uh, to the, the, the HSI itself. The oils from your fingers can actually leave hot cause hot spots on there and the HSI will fail faster so whenever you're putting your new one in make sure you don't touch any of that um, part of the HSI itself um, so you just pull your old one out grab your new one slide it back in without touching the silicon nitride spot of it there and Whenever you are replacing HSIs, you really want to go back with the same thing, whatever came out of it. Uh, they do make a lot of universals out there. Uh, they've got the Glowfly and the Hot Shot and some of the different ones like that. Uh, they do work well for universal replacements. 
but you definitely want to go back with the uh, same style, um, same brand if possible. And that way you've got the same thing back in there. Manufacturers always recommend going back with the original OEM parts. Uh, so we highly recommend that. Uh, but there are some universals out there that'll work if you are in a pinch and you do have to use one. Uh, but once that's back in there, you should be able to plug it back in and take right off. Uh, that's all there is to it, to replacing an HSI. They're not a real complicated part, but they are a very common part. So uh, they do have to be replaced once in a while. Um, but I hope this helps. Uh, check out the other videos we have. Uh, we've got some uh, different training videos on uh, flame sensors, uh, inducers, and different things like that. So check us out. Make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, and please leave any comments down below. Um, thank you and God bless.